Hey everybody, it's Mark again. I hope everybody's doing well. I hope everybody's learning things. It's been a while since I've worked on the clock. I haven't been feeling that well, but I don't want to get into that story. But um, my most expensive clock, my Alexander Fleeg, um, after the hunt, cuckoo clock has been giving me issues. At five minutes till the hour, and 25 minutes after the hour, it would stop. And I, I knew, I had a pretty good idea what was wrong with it, but because it's such a huge clock, it takes a while, because uh, I don't want to damage the carvings on the clock. But anyway, this video is going to show you what I had to do to get the clock to to uh, run. So kick back, relax, grab something to eat, grab something to drink, grab something to smoke if you choose to do so, and let's learn things. This is my Alexander Plague cuckoo clock, the huge cuckoo clock. I got other videos on it, but uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna have to take the movement out, and the reason why is because the clock will stop every hour, about five minutes till the hour, and the reason why is because the wire that catches the 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 pin off the minute arbor there's two different pins versus a, a shark pin the wire is spread too far apart and so um, it needs to be adjusted and when I turn the minute hand hopefully I could do this you'll be able to hear it click this is coming up on the half hour. It shouldn't click like that. It's putting too much pressure on it. This is coming up on the hour. There's two different pens on this thing. It clicks with one pen and not the other pen. And so the pen itself could be bent too much. This is coming up on the half hour again, which it would be the would have been the hour originally when I put this on. Anyway, I'm going to have to disconnect the bird, disconnect the bellows, and take the movement out to adjust that. So, uh, I hope we learn things today. I've talked before about a wire above the door being the nighttime shutoff lever for older cuckoo clocks. Well, guess what? There's a wire above this door and with just one wire, the bird can't come out because it's connected to both doors. And because of that, it can't cuckoo. So, yes, when you um, uh, undo the door, you'll have to uh, open up the side panels to get the cuckoo to catch up with itself but you can use that as a nighttime shutoff lever now that i got the movement out and hooked up to my stand what i thought was going on isn't going on what i thought was going on was the curve on the end of this wire that catches the two pins and you should be able to see the two pins. I'll just 
something to point with. There's one pin. Right there. And the other pin is 180 degrees away from it, which is right here. But those pins catches that wire, and you can see that wire lift. And I thought that wire was bent wrong. But it's not. It's not cuckooing because I have my clamp too close to the uh, cuckoo levers. And that's why it's not going to cuckoo. Um, but I'm just going to let it run by itself to see if... Uh, if it goes past the half hour here and then the, do the same thing on the hour and then put it back in the case and go from there. I, I think what might have been going on, I had these hands made and these hands are pretty thick. I might have had the hour hand, the hour hand goes on quite a ways and I might have out, had the hour hand too much on the minute hand section. Uh, and, and so the hands might be too thick. But they will still work. I just have to put the hands on properly. Because I don't have the pendulum on, it actually goes pretty fast. I went through... Um, 35 minutes in about 5 minutes maybe a little bit longer but as you can see it's, it's rotating fairly easily so um, I think the like I said I think the issue was I didn't have the um, hour hand on enough and it was putting a bind on the minute arbor, the center wheel. But if you were to adjust this lever right here, which comes off the um, those pins, when I lift this up, you will see that this moves and that this moves. Because it's all part of the same system. You see the lever that goes into the count wheel? It's moving. The, the brass lever that goes into the second wheel strike side with the cam. And then the third wheel warning pin hits the end of it to stop it from cuckooing. It's moving. The trip lever, this lever right here, it's moving. It's all part of the same system. So um, remember that because if you adjust this, you're also adjusting all this other stuff. So it's best to hold this lever with a pair of pliers. Or have two wire benders holding this side with one wire bender and bending the other side with a different wire bender or your fingers because this is fairly easy wire to bend. Because if you don't, you're going to mess up all your adjustments that you've done inside here. And as you can see, it was on the half hour now. It's almost a little past, probably about 18 minutes till the hour. And it done that in about two minutes. So um, it goes fairly quickly without the pendulum on. So be patient. 
Another thing I'm going to do while I have the movement out of the clock case is test the cuckoo all the way around because it did skip a, a, a number. And there could be a couple of reasons why it skipped a number. If I can re get it to repeat itself, uh, one of the reasons why it might have skipped a number is over time, the very end of these slots could have a burr on them. So take a file and slightly file down the flat part, not the sides. If you file the sides, you're making that gap wider, and it could, just like right here is the 12 and 1 o'clock position, it could cause the... Uh, the arm that goes into the slots to um, to go into the slot too many times because you now made it as wide as this 12 to 130 position. Um, so only file the very flat spot of the slots. Another reason why it could, it just did it right there. So I might have a burr on that spot. So what I did was took a, a marker and mark that spot. I'm going to continue. Um, I know it's this spot that it's in, but... I just using that as a reference point. I'm going to continue testing it to see if it skips somewhere else. And then if it doesn't, then I know that I have a burr on that one spot. If it does skip somewhere else, I could have another burr or this lever that goes into the wheel is not exactly bent right and it could be causing it to skip because it's not bent right. It did just did it again. So again, I could have a burr or that lever could be bent wrong. So I'm going to continue testing these and go from there. I tested it and the, I put several black marks on that wheel. And so uh, I didn't think it was burr. I got to looking and I told you that some movements have got springs to, uh, to push this lever down. It goes in the count wheel, and then some movements rely on this spring right here that makes the bird go back in. And in this case, um, it is the this lever right here. It relies on that spring that makes the bird go back in. I adjusted this wire so it touched the trip wire for the cuckoo bird more and then i went through the motions again twice and it didn't skip so hopefully i have that all fixed and i'm going to put this movement back in and go from there That's what I love about cuckoo clocks. They will drive you freaking cuckoo. 
with the movement out of the case, I went through everything and it wasn't making that clicky noise when it went to the top of the hour, five minutes till the hour. But with the movement back into the case, and I checked the hands um, on the hour. Of course, that was a half hour, but on the hour, every so often, just like now, not then, sorry. It gets in a bind, the hands get stiff, but then it makes this hard clicking noise, uh, one big click before it, you can turn the hands. Just like that. Just like that. And so, um, time to take a break and think about it and, and try to figure out what's going on. With the uh, clicking noise still going on, remember I was telling you that I thought maybe the hands might be too thick. So I took the hour hand off, and so I just got the minute hand that I'm going to put on. And see what happens. And that time, it was, it got hard also. So it doesn't have anything to do with the hands being too thick. It's got hard right there too. You can see it going back. So you can see it going back. So nothing to do with the hands. So I have to figure out what it is. This is what I'm thinking is what it is. You could see a gap at the top of the minute arbor or center wheel. There's no gap at the bottom of the minute arbor or center wheel. I'm thinking that the uh, movement is in crooked which is causing pressure on the uh, wire that I told you is what's causing it to make that clicking noise. This uh, clock, this Alexander Fleeg clock, it's got a, a small hole in it for the minute arbor, and it's got this hole here, but I would have to take the dial off and that, because it's an antique clock, I don't want to take the dial off. My antique GK clock right there, it doesn't have this big of a hole. It only has a small hole. Modern clocks and vintage clocks have got that cutaway version. That way you could take the dial off and try to determine what is wrong with your clock, such as this clock right here. But taking this dial off would be a lot easier than taking that dial off. And I'm not going to take that dial off. So uh, one of my subscribers suggested to do something else. And I do take uh, and read everybody's suggestions and comments, and and sometimes I do um, do what they suggest. 
y'all seen this uh, stand that I in inherited from my buddy Ron, but Cheryl suggested that I drill a hole in a piece of wood and mount the movement to the piece of wood. And I leave uh, Cheryl's, she got a brand new YouTube uh, channel out. I'll leave her um, channel at the end of this video. Please uh, subscribe to her channel. She does really good. Um, and explaining things for somebody who is is fairly new and working on clocks. But anyway, I I don't have that big circle cut out, so I'm going to see if I can uh, uh, duplicate the issue with what I have here. And so far with this being mounted on this board... It has not um, bound up, caught, clicked, whatever you want to say. So I'm going to allow it to run. Um, I, before I can resolve an issue, I have to duplicate the issue. The cuckoo clocks would really drive you cuckoo. I often wondered why the lever that is connected to all this has got a tail on it. Let me see if I can show you on this clock. I would be able to if if I took it all apart, it's a anyway, this wire right here that wraps around the second wheel is normally longer and it comes down and it has a tail that curves up the purpose behind that tail is when the minute arbor is tripped which raises this lever right here it bit you could you should be able to see the third wheel warning pen as it is tripped the third wheel warning pen rides along that tail to prevent what I'm fixing to show you you should be able to see the third wheel warning pen riding along that wire but it goes underneath that wire in this case because I broke the tail off and trying to adjust it. And so when it goes underneath that wire, your clock is not going to be able to do anything because it's underneath that wire. So uh, this has to raise so far. Because of the two pins that are on this center wheel. I've got that off right now, but um, and if it doesn't raise enough then it doesn't start the cuckoo sequence and it also, if it doesn't raise enough, in this case, it takes a 
bull revolution, bull revolution of the minute arbor to trip the cuckoo. Same thing it did when I first got this movement. And it's because those levers are out of adjustments. I have probably every video out there of problems. If you were to take the time and watch my YouTube videos, I probably discuss it. I probably experienced it. And I and that's why I create these YouTube videos to uh, to show you what to do. Um, there is the title only allows a hundred and eight characters. That's to include spaces and everything. I cannot sit there and type more than a hundred and eight characters. I think it's a hundred and eight. Might be a hundred and five. But it's 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 hard for you to um, it's hard for me to um, to tell you what I'm covering with a hundred characters. So more than, more than likely, you'll have to watch a few of my videos to find your problem. These drill bits you could find at your local hardware stores, but uh, this one's pretty small. Um, they're kind of a one-time only thing, at least they are with me, because I typically will break them. But that's how small that thing is, and I'm going to attempt to drill a hole in the shaft to um, to put another wire in. This is the drill bit that I had in my drill, and the tip is gone, basically. Like I said, with these drill bits, they're uh, they're a one time only thing when it comes to me but you got to do what you got to do I need to put my uh, drill press together. My drill press is heavy and it sits on the floor. The problem with it being heavy with my back issues. Yesterday, my back went out on me again. Even with me taking my pain meds, hydros, muscle relaxers, diclofenac pills, Tylenol. Every so often, my back gets to bother me so much that I can't do anything. I, I can't sleep. I can't move. It feels like somebody just constantly punching me in my back or stepping really hard on my back. 24 hours later, I, I was tired. I drove myself to the VA today. Uh, I live alone. Uh, there's no other choice um, other than call an ambulance. And uh, I called an ambulance once. It cost me around $500 total. Um, I appealed the VA. I lost. Somebody sued the VA. Because of my luck, 
Um, it, it, the VA got sued. The people won. I should have got my money back, but because of my luck, I was a few days outside the, the window of, um, of the, the case being approved. So anyway, I, I drove myself to the VA today and got a shot. It's 1.30 a.m. The shot is basically wearing off. They normally last six months, a year, a little longer, but the shot is wearing off, and my back is starting to bother me again, and uh, don't ever get old. Anyway, I'm going to continue drilling this hole, and because I, I have to replace this, I have to put a wire where that one broke off. So I have my initial hole drilled all the way through. And I have to choose what wire I want to use. I bought this off of uh, Time Savers. Um, it's for um, making like uh, pendulum leader wires and stuff. And I think it will um, be strong enough for what I need. And long enough, of course. Trying to get the old wire. This is the old wire right here. And so, um, and it went on something like that there. But, um, I said this wire, I think, will be suffice. Now I have to drill off the hole just enough to uh, put this wire in. The wire is 0.4 millimeters in diameter. KWM reamer number one. It's 0.4 millimeters um, in diameter. So I was able to use that. Now I got the wire through. What I'm going to do is um, smash this end of the wire and then pull it back through. The flat end of the wire will hold the wire in the hole you might have to put a dab of soldering on it but or a dab of super glue or whatever but it, that wire is pretty tight as it is but I'm gonna take my hammer and smash the flat end of this wire the the end of the wire because um, what's the old saying you can't put a square peg in a round hole basically that's what you're doing uh, you're making this thing so it's hard to go through that round hole So a little bit of soldering, well, maybe more than a little bit, but, you know, I told you before I suck at soldering, but anyway, that's not going to move.
so hopefully it'll uh, work for what I need it to do and get this thing back together. So I made another wire and first function test it works perfect. The pin on the third wheel warning wheel hits the lever that falls into the second wheel cam where it's supposed to. Now to see when I trip the, I have to install the minute shaft. I have to install this to see whether or not it will function after that is all installed properly is the next question. It seems like It seems like the um, the wire is too tight. It's too far down. So I'm going to have to bend it up to, to get it to um, function properly. Because it's, it's too far down. This is the whole... And it has to go up further than that. It has to go... This piece here has to go up in this area. So I'm going to have to bend that wire. When I lift up this wire, it functions properly. But now I have to bend it so this part lifts up that wire. Okay, with the uh, strike side back together, except for the count wheel. When you turn the minute hand arbor, you will see that the clock goes into warning. Let me do it again. As I turn the minute hand arbor... That's not working like it was. Let me try it again, because it worked that time. As I turn the minute hand arbor, and see that is not working as it should. So one tab is working properly, or maybe it's because the way I got it tilted. I get something to point with, so you can see what I'm seeing. This is the wire that I replaced. It comes off of this lever right here, which is part of the front, okay? This, when I lift this, you will see the wire that I replaced lifted up. It comes out, and it 
it's got this curve in it, and then it has a long wire. That long wire broke. And that long wire has to be there. The purpose behind, behind that long wire is the third wheel warning pin is going to ride along the top of that long wire as the clock is in warning. With it being broke, the pin would go underneath that long wire uh, because it wasn't there and it would get stuck underneath this curb. So when it goes into warning, the third wheel warning pin is going to ride along this long wire and then the curb section prevents it from cuckooing when it all is working properly. So I'm going to see if I could show you this on camera. Right now, it's the third wheel warning pin is hitting this brass post right here. You should be able to see it. So when it goes into warning, that brass post is going to lift up. That pin is going to run along this long wire and hit that curb section to prevent from cuckooing until this lever drops and then it will cuckoo. So, why it's doing that, I don't know. So, I'm going to try it again. It's in warning right now. I'm rotating the minute hand. It just dropped, and then it cuckooed one time, and it stopped. Then this time around, as I rotate in the hand, it keep it, it didn't function as it's supposed to. So I have to figure out why part of the time it functions correctly and part of the time it doesn't. See, right now it's not functioning correctly. It's... So, I'll figure that out, and then we'll get back. The thing was working properly. The problem is, I was letting go of the great wheel. So, as I turn the hand... As I turn the hand, you're going to see the governor fan rotate. That's when it goes into warning. And then you're going to see that, that pin ride along that long wire. I don't know what happened. I do this thing several times off camera. And the moment I turn this camera on, Something always goes wrong. I think what I need to do is connect a weight, is connect the um, time side up and connect the weights, put it on my stand. I think what I'm letting go is the shaft. And so I'm going to try it again by trying to focus on the shaft and not explain to you what's going on. So you're going to have to watch it. What's going to happen is in warning, the third wheel warning pen is going to ride along the shaft until this lever here drops. When it drops, that's when it's going to cook you. It's right along the shaft. It dropped. It cuckoos. One time. One more time. Again, I need to add a weight to this thing.
it's working properly. So now I need to add the weights because, and I need to add a minute hand to see whether or not the minute hand is straight up and down. I need to add the, the time side train. And as you can see, I went the wrong way on the wire. I held it here and I pushed this end down. I need to hold it here and bring this end up so it gets closer to the hands being straight up and down. It's been a while and I was telling you the wrong thing. It has nothing to do with this wire being bent up or bent down. It has to do with this piece here that catches those pins. You have to bend it in or bend it out. We're almost there. It's a couple of minutes uh, um, or a minute past 12. And, you know, that really depends on where the position of this movement is in the case also. And that's why I like using the round hole hands versus square hole hands. Round hole hands are a lot easier to adjust, but with antique bone hands or with bone hands that were made, because Justin Barron made my hands, I don't want to make a square hole hand into a, a, a round hole hand. Plus, this has got a pin that holds the hands on versus the threads. With the threads, you could tighten the hand up to make it work in my other videos i show you how to do that in order to make it work with a pen you would have to have a lot of add a lot of washers onto it the space between that hole and that hand you have to fill up to make the hand tight I'm even confusing myself. It does have to do a little bit of adjustment on this wire going up and down. And like I said, adjustment on how spread apart that piece that comes off the um, pins are. Because with some adjustments to this wire coming up, It's dead on the 12 now. So, um, I need to connect chains to this and um, weights and test it to see if the minute hand is going to, uh, and a pendulum to see if the minute hand, because remember, the reason why we took all this apart was because my clock kept stopping at five minutes till the hour or, or 25 minutes after the hour and that's because this w wire that lifts up it was getting in a bind to um to activate the clock on the when it went into warning, it was getting into a bind. And now I got, remember I also told you that whatever you do to this wire affects the back wire. So now when I rotate the hands and nothing's happening, and that's because I got the back wire out of adjustment. So I have to fix that now. They're lots of fun cuckoo clocks. They will make you go cuckoo. 
somehow the third wheel got warped. So anyway, I, I straightened a lot of it out, but I still got to straighten some more out. This is why I don't consider myself an expert. I know what is wrong. I know what needs to happen, but I don't have the equipment to do it with. And if this is not fixed, it's going to wear parts out. This third wheel is wobbling all over the place. I don't know why my camera, I'm looking straight on it, but I don't know why um, I have to tilt the drill just so y'all can see what's going on. But anyway, um, it's wobbling and it's going to ride the second wheel and the um, uh, the fly is going to be all over the place and with that being said the pen that catches that tab this tab right here might not catch it all the time like it's supposed to so, the proper thing to do would be to take it to somebody who has the equipment that can fix it for me. There's a machinist in my area, uh, Mike. Um whether he wants to fix it for me or not, I don't know. But this is my most expensive cuckoo clock, and it's out of commission because because of this um, third wheel with warning fan is warped. I might have to drive to Cape Girardeau and see a, a, a good friend of mine, Sean Barnes. He uh, has SNN clock repair. Um, he could fix it for me. But that's a two and a half hour drive there, two and a half hour drive back, five hours. I could ship it to him. But, uh, ever get the chance to fix it. So I'm fixing to take this uh, third wheel with warning pin to a local machinist and see if he could straighten it out since it's warped. I don't have a lathe to do it. I tried straightening it my normal ways. I can't straighten it. It needs to be put in a lathe um, to be straightened. And this is why I think that I've been having trouble with this clock. Because this wheel is loose on the shaft. 